I'm Hendo, and today we're making the Cocktail of Toxicity based on a homebrew potion for Dungeons & Dragons. Every month I make a different prop and cocktail based on a different potion from D&D, and this is my ninth one. We're using rum as a base, and I'm incorporating apples because, you know, poison apples. But we're also going to do this swampy, creepy version of it for Halloween reasons, and because the homebrew describes this potion as more of a murky green. I'll cover the lore behind this potion, some of the ingredients we're going to use, and of course the recipe. So let's get boozing. I came across this homebrew and thought it was too cool to pass up. It turns the drinker's blood into a toxic poison that's harmless to the user, but really dangerous to anything that might bite or leech them. And I love the idea of you becoming the poison instead of being poisoned. Creatures who come in contact with or try and consume the drinker's blood are subject to potentially being poisoned, which means they have disadvantage on any ability checks or attack rolls. It's a con save of a DC 18, and it'll deal 1d6 strength damage once per round for 6 rounds. It's obviously super rad if you're able to poison a big bad enemy, especially like one of the Sturges, or a giant leech, or a vampire, or even I think oozes have the capacity to do a blood drain. It's always helpful when the thing you're attacking has disadvantage on something. So yeah, make yourself toxic to them. Okay, so with all of this epic, home-brewed lore in mind, let's make a cocktail. Boom! We got ingredients. The base of our drink is going to be rum, and it's best to go with a clear one so that we get a nice, green, vivid color. Have I done rum lore yet? I don't think that I have, but it's a little hard to keep track. So here's some fun rum facts. Rum is considered the oldest spirit in the world. It was developed around the 1620s, although I couldn't really find, like, any stories about who decided to distill it or why. I guess somebody in the medical office was just like, Man, I really wish I could get drunk on some rubbing alcohol, and, and then they did it, and it became a really important import. It developed lots of nicknames like Demon Water, Grog, and Nelson's Blood. That last one is because of Admiral Nelson, he died in battle, and so his body was preserved in a casket of rum for the voyage home. But the sailors couldn't really keep their paws off the stuff, and they actually ended up drinking the rum that the body was being preserved in, so yeah, sometimes people call it Nelson's blood now, which is also another type of rum cocktail. But the most important thing you need to know about rum is July 31st, Black Tot Day. Apparently in the Royal Navy ever since 1655, every sailor got a ration of rum, which was called the Daily Tot. And this practice went on for over 300 years. It wasn't dismissed until July 30th of 1970, so the 31st is called Black Tot Day. And that that's just weird and charming and alarming a little bit, but I mean... We're also gonna need basically just any yellowish juice. Uh, we're gonna add blue curacao, aha, uh -huh, another ingredient, to make that green color. So I've gone with pineapple mango because uh, I don't think that I've done that flavor in a cocktail yet, and it matches this pineapple rum that I got. I don't really have a lot to say about pineapples or mangoes. Um, pineapples look weird, so that's neat. I'm also gonna cup this cocktail to it. I don't know if it's called cupping. Food, it, food is called plating, so... But we're gonna do it two different ways. One is with jello and red icing. We're gonna make like a mushy red mess at the bottom of the glass and do a nice little gel icing rim. And that's kind of gonna be like an homage to the blood effect that happens in this potion when you drink it in D&D. The other way that we're gonna cut this cocktail is actually using a hollowed out apple, and that's to sort of tie in the idea of a poison apple. Which also, side note about Snow White and the poison apple thing. So in the original fairy tale, the witch actually poisons half of the apple, so half of it is pale and half of it is red, which is the poison side. And the way that she convinces Snow White to share it is she's like, oh, don't worry, honey, I'll cut it in half, I'll eat the pale part, you can have the normal red side. It's totally cool. And also, in the fairy tale, Snow White isn't woken up by a kiss. Um, actually, the prince sees her and is like, oh my god, she's like so hot, we should just move her over to the castle and like admire how hot she is. But in transit, one of the dwarves basically just like kind of trips and like knocks her a little bit and the piece of apple falls out of her mouth and she wakes up. It's way less romantic, but it's, <laughs> I don't know kind of endearing for some reason. Clumsy people, rise up, we are here. Oh my god, that's a spider. Oh, why did I? Okay, making it swing wasn't a good idea. I don't know where it went. It's probably plotting my demise. You did nothing except terrify me. I hope your death was quick. So like, yeah, 
Clumsy gang, rise up, we are heroes. So anyway, you're gonna need an apple and I'm going with a green one since our cocktail and potion are green. We're also using some caramel sauce and some cinnamon sugar. You might also wanna pick up a melon baller in order to hollow out the apple a little bit easier. Oh, also a lemon, uh, we're just gonna use this basically to help keep the apple looking fresh. Okay, let's make the thing. First up is gonna be hollowing out this apple with a melon baller. Oh, that's surprisingly easy. You don't wanna get like too close to the sides because then, you know, if you poke a hole in it, your cocktail is gonna fall out. We'll also need a little bit of lemon and I'm just gonna squeeze that on the apple to keep it from browning. And let's go ahead and sugar the rim now. This is regular sugar and cinnamon, but I added brown sugar because um, it's the best sugar. I love it. Now I'm gonna do the regular glass too. I have a glob of jello and I'm just gonna kind of mash this up and put it in the glass. That is the worst sound. <laughs> I was wondering why the red wasn't as vibrant and I guess I picked up black cherry instead of, I assume regular cherry is what the red flavor is. Get, get the regular red one. But I'm not going back to the store, so this is what we get. Okay, another side note. I personally despise Jell-O. I hate the texture. I feel like the flavor isn't that good. Um, it creeps me out. But I will give Jell-O credit. Uh, it had an important role in The Wizard of Oz. I guess in that one scene with like the, well, that's a horse of a different color and the horse keeps changing colors. I guess they were originally gonna paint the horse, but all the animal rights groups were like, and they were like, okay, well, we'll just dye its fur and we'll just like, so they tried a few different things like food coloring, but the thing that actually worked the best was making a sort of paste with jello powder, and they just covered the horses in that, which the horses kept licking off and they had to keep reapplying it between scenes. I just think that's really cute. Maybe you're okay, jello. Ugh. Okay, so now let's mix our cocktail. I'm gonna make enough servings for two people. So first up is four ounces of rum. It just smells pretty good. I'm not usually into Malibu because of the because of the coconut, but this is this can hang. And now two ounces of our juice. Now it's time for the blue curacao. This is going to be what turns our drink green. So I would add a little bit at a time. We'll probably end up with like a quarter of an ounce. I feel like this is a little more blue than I want, so I'm actually gonna add a little bit more juice. I think that's better. So that's four ounces of rum, three ounces of juice, and like a quarter of an ounce of the blue curacao. And now we just give it a shake. Ideally with ice, but I didn't I didn't make any ice ahead of time, because I eh. And then we just pour it in. That looks so creepy. I think it's actually still more blue than I would like, so I'm gonna make another batch and put less of the blue curacao. And maybe one more ounce. Five ounces of juice. And you, we're gonna like, we're just doing like a morsel of blue. That's a much better color. Okay, now let's do a pour. <laughs> Kirby, <laughs> you look so funny. There it is. That's much creepier and murkier.
and the red bloody icing drizzle for the clear cup. Let's test it out, shall we? That's pretty good. And I'll try the one contaminated by Jello. Ugh. That is a that is a weird texture. Yep, that's a pretty safe and easy rum pineapple drink. It's mostly the cupping that looks cool, or the presentation, whatever the word is for the the aesthetic, the aesthetic is where it's at. And that's pretty much it for the cocktail of toxicity. for watching. I hope you get to enjoy this cocktail with your online party or just chilling at home. Or for Halloween. If you're looking for a prop version of this cocktail, you can also check out my video next week. Sorry this is kind of super ultra last minute. Um, I finally got a sponsored video on my channel which came out on Monday so you should check that out if you can. Uh, but you know, better late than never. Next month I'm doing the Potion of Vampirism from 3.5, but if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments. And until next time, I'm Hendo. Thanks for D&D drinking with me.